Welcome to my lecture online. To help us get an even better understanding of what we mean by electric flux, let's again look at our initial definition where we said that if we have a loop of area A which is placed within an electric field in such a way that the area of the loop is perpendicular to the direction of the electric field, then the electric flux through the loop, and those are important words because typically we think about electric flux through a loop, that will then be defined as or equal to the product of the magnitude of the electric field and the magnitude of the size of the area. And again, that's again presuming that they're perpendicular to each other. If they're not perpendicular, if the electric field comes in at an angle, then we can say that it's the product of the electric field strength times the area of the loop times the cosine of the angle between the perpendicular to the loop and the direction of the electric field. Now, to get a feel for it, Let's now have some examples where we have a, a couple of electric fields. One that has a strength of 2,000 newtons per coulomb and is pointed in the x direction. And then here we have one that's much weaker, 50 newtons per coulomb, also pointing in the x direction. And then we have some areas, and let's assume in each case that the area is perpendicular to the electric field. I drew it like this so you can kind of see what the size of the area looks like. So in this case, if the strength is 2,000 newtons per coulomb and the area is 5 square meters, when we, when we multiply the two together, we can say that in this case, the electric flux would be equal to 2,000 times 5 or 10,000 newtons per coulomb times meters squared. But if the area is very small, with the same electric field, notice that only a few of the field lines will go to the area here, many will go to the area there. So when we multiply these together, direct the electric flux through this loop, the same field, just a smaller loop, you can see that the electric flux will in this case be equal to 2000 times 0.1, which makes it 200 newtons per coulomb times meter squared. So simply the product of those two. Now, if you have a really big area, but a very small electric field, only 50 newtons per coulomb. You can see that in this case, the amount of flux through the loop, the flux through the loop is going to be equal to 50 times 80, which in this case is going to be 4,000 newtons per coulomb meter squared. So even though it's a very small field, since you have a really big area, you have a lot of flux going through that loop. But if the electric field is very small, and the area is very small, then in this, that case you have very little electric flux going through the loop. So here we multiply 50 times 0.2, that is only 10 newtons per coulomb times meter squared. So you can see it really depends upon the strength or the magnitude of the electric field and the size of the loop. Now, also, what happens if we take the loop and we turn it 90 degrees in such a way that the perpendicular to the loop is perpendicular to the electric field, well, then the cosine of 90 degrees would equal zero and there will be no flux going to the loop, which is, makes sense because in this way, the flux can go to the loop, but when you turn it like this, there's no way any flux can go to the loop and then the flux will be zero. So again, it's associated with flux going through the loop with how much electric field in a way, how much of the electric field goes through the loop that we present to the electric field. And that's the best way to think about electric flux.